Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this webinar and happy spring to everybody. Spring is in quotes because it's below freezing here in Albany, New York. But in any case, uh, we're glad that you're spending this hour with us. I'm Allison Slack from Fuse Hub, uh, where I'm the manager for manufacturing related strategic initiatives. Um, Fuse Hub is a not for profit organization that connects New York's small and mid sized manufacturing companies to the resources and programs and expertise that they need for things like business growth, technology commercialization, and innovation. What we do here at Fuse Hub is help companies navigate New York's really robust network of industry experts at uh, university research centers, manufacturing extension partnership centers, and other economic development organizations and service providers. Um, Fuse Hub is the designated statewide New York Manufacturing Extension Partnership Center. Uh, we are supported by Empire State Development's Division of Science, Technology, and Innovation, known as NYSTAR, uh, and we work together very closely with that agency. Today we're here to discuss a few of the New York State Centers of Excellence and help you understand the opportunities that they might present for your company. New York State, and specifically its NYSTAR division, uh, funds 11 such centers of excellence that are based at some of the top universities in the state. And this Centers of Excellence program is designed to foster collaboration between the academic research community and the business sector in order to develop and commercialize new products and technologies, to promote private sector investment in emerging high-tech fields in New York State, and to create and expand technology-related businesses and employment. So long story short, the Centers of Excellence work hand in hand with companies like yours to develop products, improve processes, adopt new technologies, and innovate in a variety of ways to stay competitive. Today we have representatives from uh, four Centers of Excellence. And in figuring out how we could present just a subset of these Centers of Excellence to you, we roughly landed on a theme of sustainability for this particular webinar. So all the centers that you'll hear about today deal with technologies in areas like energy, efficiency, the environment, um, climate, uh, sustainable built environments, et cetera. And as we, we're gonna have each of these representatives uh, present to you uh, about 10 minutes each um, in turn. And as we go along, uh, we will leave time for a Q&A at the end. So you can submit a question through your GoToWebinar control panel. There is a questions section. Um, go ahead and type them in. We'll collect them and address them uh, at the conclusion of the presentations. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Ed Bogus from the Syracuse Center of Excellence for Environmental and Energy Systems, which is based at Syracuse University. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, Allison. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this uh, webinar. Uh, thanks to Fuse Hub for putting it together. Um, so you see my, my contact information. I'm a faculty member at Syracuse University in mechanical and aerospace engineering, and I'm the executive director of Syracuse CLE. Next slide, Allison. So as Allison said, there are 11 COEs. The program started by, was started by New York State in 2001. We were established as a center of excellence in 2002. We were among the first five COEs. Um, at the start, right, right from the start, we've been focused on uh, assisting companies and making connections between universities and companies relating to innovations for the built and urban environments. We originated um, actually at a time when uh, when the U.S. Green Building Council was first introducing the LEED rating system, and before it really got widespread adoption, um, we saw an opportunity to assist companies develop new products, specifically targeting applications for green buildings and related applications. Uh, today, we we say that uh, we focus our efforts in three broad areas: healthy buildings, clean energy, and water resources. Uh, we serve as an innovation partner. I like to say we go from lab to market, and also from market to lab. Um, so we assist moving uh, innovations through stages of research and development, and also demonstration and commercialization. Uh, we have exceptional facilities for R&D. Um, we've also done um, more than 60 demonstrations in the field. 
in the in the photo to the right, the aerial photo, that's that's Syracuse. You see the Carrier Dome, and you see Onondaga Lake, and you see a lot of buildings. So that's downtown Syracuse, and the area that's called the Hill, that includes Syracuse University, SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry, Upstate Medical University. We like to say this is our laboratory. It's in the field and houses and commercial buildings that in, in this community and really across the state that, that we've done demonstrations of new technologies and real buildings uh, and evaluated and mon monitored and verified their, their performance. Uh, through June 2017, we've performed 197 projects for 67 companies and those companies have reported that we've helped them create or retain more than a thousand jobs. And we look forward to working with more companies. We hope that to make those connections on uh, through this webinar. Next, next slide. So our our headquarters is located at the intersection of um, Interstates 81 and 690, adjacent to uh, downtown um, Syracuse, and also at the foot of the of the hill in Syracuse. Uh, we've designed this as a living laboratory uh, that give us capabilities in each of our focus areas. On the right, there are nine images of, of different uh, capabilities at our, at, our, uh, at our headquarters, and this is just a, a, sub, a subset. Again, we, we like to say we go from lab to market. So again, supporting uh, basic and applied research, the three pictures at the bottom illustrate some of the labs in, in our facilities that enable us to do uh, research relating to combustion, uh, to ener energy conversion, to uh, flow visualization. And then the, the middle row involves uh, capabilities where we, we can um, evaluate and scale up uh, ideas. There's a biofuels lab, a materials lab, a lab for testing applications of unmanned aerial vehicles. And then the top row shows capabilities really relating to real environments, so simulated office environments or real environments or using new technologies for envisioning future environments. So across these three focus areas, you see we have capabilities relating to indoor environmental quality innovations, building materials, aerial energy assessments, and then in clean energy and water resources. Um, and, and we assist companies with developing innovations relating to any of those application areas. Next slide. Just uh, two project examples, and actually I'm gonna draw your attention first to the, the bottom bullet on this slide. Um, we uh, issue a, a progress report every year, and in our progress reports, we have uh, stories about companies that we've assisted, and I'd urge you to visit our website and down, download a pro progress, progress report or two, and you can read the stories about uh, how, how we've assisted individual companies. There's two, two examples here. Uh, one, a, a company called Ephesus Lighting was a startup in 2010, and they developed a truly transformational technology for lighting sports arenas with LED lights. They were the first um, LED light for a sports arena. It actually was de de first installed at a uh, the War Memorial in downtown Syracuse where uh, a minor league hockey team uh, played, so that was the, the first installation. And and then um, it's actually three three years later, uh, their lights were in the University of Phoenix Stadium and lit the Super Bowl in February 2015. Uh, we've assisted them through a variety of stages. We were one of their first customers, demonstrating their lamp their their lights in our facility. We've assisted them with proof of concept testing and other product development. And um, it's just a, a, it's been a uh, wonderful experience for us to watch the transformation of a market with a disruptive technology of uh, how LED lighting have, has really transformed the lighting of, uh, of professional sports events and promises to um, transform lighting for, uh, for, for sports venues from high, high school to the pros in, in coming years. Another company, New Climate Air Quality Systems, was a, a startup uh, going back to 2002 when, the, when we were designated as a COE. We've helped them develop a, 
an innovative HVAC terminal that, re that uh, reduces energy consumption and improves indoor environmental quality. Uh, we've helped them with a variety of, uh, of uh, uh, projects uh, over the years. Um, and, um, and you can visit our uh, progress reports to read, read details. Next slide. So then uh, how, how you could get involved or how we can help you. Um, I'm gonna highlight two specific opportunities. First, we offer a service to small companies that we call the Analysis and Design Center. Uh, these are for companies that are developing new products and would benefit from simulations of the product performance before you actually construct a prototype and evaluate its, its, uh, its performance. Uh, we have students under the supervision of faculty members who perform simulation using software that does computational fluid dynamics and finite element analysis. We use a portion of the funds that we receive from NYSTAR for our Center of Excellence uh, programs to subsidize these expenses for companies. We've done more than a dozen projects for individual companies to help them develop products that they've subsequently taken to market. And you can find more details about how to get how to access that service through our website or by contacting either me or uh, Tammy Rosania. And then uh, and then the second thing I'll, I'll bring to your attention is our partner program. Uh, we offer opportunities for companies to engage with us and become a, a partner. Uh, we have three levels in our program, a partner, pro, a partner level, affiliate partner level, and startup partner level. You can read on our website the details of each of those levels and the, and the benefits and, um, that, are, that are available to, to, uh, to each partner level. One, one of the benefits is our partners are eligible to receive awards that we make through competitive solicitations. Uh, one of our programs is called the Innovation Fund. We uh, have solicitations twice a year. Uh, we make awards up to $10,000 to support projects uh, for uh, removing barriers to commercialization of, of, uh, of products. We have another program uh, that uh, provides uh, some funding for supporting student internships in the summertime. And actually, both of these programs are have solicitations that are open right now. So if you're not already a partner of the Syracuse COE, and if this sounds interesting to you, um, I'd encourage you to take a look at our partner program and our applications for each of these programs are due next Thursday. So there's there's still time uh, to become a partner and uh, to submit an application for either of these programs. And with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to uh, Allison and say, uh, again, invite invite any anyone who's uh, watching this webinar to uh, contact either uh, Tammy Rosanio or me for more information on any of these programs. Thanks a lot, Ed. Appreciate it. Um, we'll move on to Colby Creedon from the Center of Excellence um, that's based at the University at Albany, the Weather Research and Development Center. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Colby. I manage business development at the uh, U Albany Center of Excellence. Um, our center was formed um, a few years ago. In, in 2016 with, with the mission to help businesses understand and respond to weather's economic impact. And, and we speak to a lot of businesses and, and what we usually find is that many businesses have a qualitative understanding or a hunch that the weather has a economic impact on their, on their business. And we help turn that hunch into actionable information that the business can use to make decisions that impact revenue or costs or, or mitigate risk risk or um, other business uh, KPIs. So for for today, um, if if I'm successful at conveying the message I want to convey is is would be for everyone to to leave the webinar with an understanding that the weather may be impacting your business and that our center can help either understand the impact, predict business outcomes based on the weather, and um, with, with that help, help improve, improve margins for the business. Um, so next slide. Um, so before I um, talk about, about the center, I just wanted to do a brief 
um, intro to the weather and weather's impact on business. Um, so commercial weather solutions have been available for probably 30, 30 plus years. However, those solutions have been used in industries that are traditionally viewed as weather sensitive, like agriculture, utilities, renewable energy, et cetera. And a few points over the past 30 years, there's been some cycles where the weather industry has attempted to push advances in prediction into industries outside those traditionally weather sensitive ones. And until recently, those pushes by the, by the weather industry have, have been rejected. However, there's been some advances recently in computing and machine learning and artificial intelligence that have enabled the weather industry to develop products and services that are more accurate and better at predicting the weather, which translates to better business decisions. So the, um, the graph on the top right of the, of the slide shows mergers and acquisition activity over the past few years as a, for, for weather businesses. And um, this, this is evidence that businesses outside of the traditional weather sensitive industries have, um, have started to realize that the weather has an impact and that we can leverage that impact to make or save um, significant amounts of money. So, and these transactions range anywhere from tens of millions to, to billions of dollars which makes sense because the economic impact of the weather across the United States every year um, equals about a half a trillion dollars. So um, in addition, the, the weather affects most points, just about every point in, the, in, in supply chains. And New York in particular is one of the most weather sensitive economies where 13% uh, of, of GSP fluctuates because, because of normal variations in the weather. And that excludes superstorms and hurricanes and, and massive events. So we're talking about just average day-to-day -day changes in temperature and precipitation. So um, next slide. So what our center does is we help businesses leverage the weather to improve margins and reduce risk. Um, one of our, our biggest assets, like many of the other centers, I'm sure, is, uh, is our research expertise. We have 120 graduate level researchers capable of addressing most weather-related research problems. And, um, the interesting thing about atmospheric sciences is that to be good at it, you need to be good at a variety of different scientific disciplines. Um, atmospheric sciences is, is about is almost the intersection of chemistry, physics, data science, computer science, artificial intelligence, electrical engineering, and uh, and there's more disciplines. But um, so our our faculty and staff and students are, are very capable. Um, in addition, we operate, the university operates um, the world's most advanced weather detection network, the, the New York State Mesonet. And we have a core research facility with computing resources and a variety of software that can help develop solutions for businesses that help them mitigate the impacts of weather and plan and reduce costs and improve margins. Um, and for the, the projects that we have, we have done in the first few years, um, we've, we've helped generate a 700% ROI for, for our partners to date. Um, next slide. Um, so how we, we do it, we have um, three services. Um, one is uh, WX eval. In the, in the weather world, WX is, uh, is an abbreviation for weather. So um, WX eval is a, is a weather sensitivity assessment. Um, many, many businesses are, like I said before, have that, that qualitative understanding of weather's impact. Um, but WXEVAL is a service that 
um, helps the business understand quantitatively what that impact is so that they can they can make decisions that that impact costs or revenue. Um, WX R&D is a product development service, um, which is like the next step to WX eval. After we have that understanding of a business's weather sensitivity, we can take that and potentially turn it into a software like product that um, we can do the development work and then pass it on to the business to operate and then WX Biz is an analytics and decision support service, um, which is on, which is the the next step after after the R and D, where there's a product that's been developed, it's operating, and um, we're combining weather data with business data to help businesses make decisions. And uh, next slide. So a couple project examples. Um, Thinking about the the supply chain um, and the weather's impact on on every point throughout that supply chain, um, raw materials, the the supply of raw materials and the demand for raw materials in a lot of cases is affected by the weather. Um, you can think of agricultural products um, and different metals where the weather affects the supply. So you can predict the weather. Um, you can have an indication into the available supply of different raw materials. Um, and as raw materials move from, um, move to the manufacturer, um, if they're, they're being shipped on trucks and planes and, and boats, um, many of those, those costs associated with delivering goods um, from one place to another are affected by by the weather. So we've worked with companies helping them refine weather models that route ship that route products based on um, the best weather conditions to get get a, a truck from uh, point A to point B in the most cost effective manner. Um, and then if you're thinking about what's happening at a factory. Um, we do emissions modeling and forecasting uh, to help comply with regulations. And um, we can also predict um, using weather to help predict the, the price of power and natural gas to help maintain uh, predictable operational costs. And then as, uh, as goods move from the manufacturer to the retailer at the distributor at the distributor level. Um, again, uh, weather-based shipping and routing is something that um, we've helped companies with. And then further downstream at the, the retailer level, um, weather has a, has a significant impact on the demand for, for a bunch of different goods. Um, and some, some goods are, are more obvious like jackets or snow shovels, which um, most people understand, but there's there's a demand for for other products like um, like yogurt and baby clothes and microwaves that are also correlated to different thresholds in in the weather. So giving a a better weather prediction and pairing that with um, the the sale of different goods and services can help predict um, revenue for for manufacturers further upstream. Um, and then uh, next slide. Um, so to, to work with us or to learn more about weather's impact on, on your business, um, the, the best thing to do would be just to reach out. Um, my contact information is, is here and I think everyone's gonna get a copy of, of these slides. Um, so first, just understanding um, weather's impact on the business would be would be the first step and and we can help with that and uh, and go from there. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Colby. Um, and Colby's right. We will be making the slides available to all attendees um, right on the same uh, page that you registered for this webinar. Uh, and we'll provide the link here at the end of, of, of the webinar. Um, and also wanted to remind folks, or if you join late, 
there is a questions uh, section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to submit um, comments or questions as we go along, and we'll address them during a Q&A at the end. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Steve Zarnicki from the Small Scale Systems Integration and Packaging Center at Binghamton University. Great. Thank you, Allison. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be coming to you from San Jose this morning, uh, enjoying your northeast nor'easter from afar, I guess. Uh, last year, I was out here during the week of the 2017 blizzard, so well-timed conference, I guess. Um, I'd like to tell you about the uh, S3IP Center of Excellence. We're a collection of research centers here at Binghamton University, all focused on various aspects of manufacturing. Next slide, please. The Center of Excellence is all about connecting the university to businesses uh, using the research capabilities, the consulting capabilities, and the laboratory capabilities of the university to solve industrial problems. Our core focus area is the electronics manufacturing industry, uh, and we also serve adjacent areas such as uh, the alternative energy industry and then uh, even just general manufacturing. So representative companies that we work with include electronics manufacturers, uh, data center operators and builders who are focused on energy efficiency improvement, and battery manufacturers as three representative groups of companies. Along the bottom of the slide is a logo cloud showing a sampling of New York companies that we deal with. And this ranges from the very largest global companies, such as the IBMs and GEs of the world, Lockheed Martin, Corning, BAE Systems, to medium to largest companies like Amphenol and, and Raymond, to medium and even small companies, uh, some of which you may have heard of, uh, some may not, because they're really relatively small startup companies, often uh, just two or three or five people. So one of the messages I want to leave you with is that what we offer scales very well. We're comfortable working with startup companies. We're comfortable working with Fortune 50 companies. And it's all about solving problems and doing so in a uh, timely and, and focused fashion. Next slide, please. Here is the range of capabilities that we offer. Uh, core strengths include failure analysis and reliability of electronic devices and assemblies, and more generally, the manufacturing methods and materials for electronics and related uh, manufacturing. When we say electronics manufacturing, that's both traditional printed circuit board manufacturing as well as the emerging area of flexible electronics, uh, where we're able to work with companies on developing processes for putting electronics on plastic films and glass films. So they're flexible, they're dendy, they, they fit into conformal uh, spaces. Part of our analytical capabilities include the characterization of materials and manufactured items, both bulk materials as well as taking finished items and, and deconstructing them to take a look at the manufacturing processes. A key issue in uh, electronics is thermal management. Electronics get hot, they expand, they contract, and that's why they tend to fail. So we have deep strength in thermal analysis and modeling of materials, products, and systems, both experimentally and through analysis and simulation. So in essence, what we're able to do is model the entire uh, uh, thermal flow from chip to chiller particularly relevant in the data center industry where you have server farms of thousands or tens of thousands of servers and thermal management becomes a, 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 a monumental problem. Uh, and we're able to model that energy flow all the way from the uh, CPU chips on board the servers all the way out to the uh, uh, chilling plant out in the backyard. In the area of alternative energy, we have strengths in chemistry development for advanced batteries. This is at the fundamental science level. Uh, Stan Whittingham, the 
co-inventor of the lithium ion battery runs that research center. So uh, I'm not sure that the expertise gets much deeper than that. Uh, and we have labs for thin film material deposition for electronic devices, things like advanced solar cells using earth abundant materials and uh, merging together systems such as copper, zinc, pink, tin, sulfur together with perovskites for low cost and, and high efficiency. All of these capabilities are available to industrial partners. Uh, we have professional staff running the labs who serve as problem solvers. They all have uh, enormous industrial experience, uh, both personally working in industry and uh, working with industrial clients. So it's uh, very easy to engage the team. They, they love to solve problems. Next slide, please. Three case studies I'm going to go through rather quickly. The first is Amphenol, uh, a medium to large manufacturer of uh, high quality, high, reli high reliability connectors for the aerospace and industri uh, industrial equipment businesses. Uh, well established name. They've been a long time partner with us, probably for 20 years already. They wanted to uh, improve the quality assurance processes. Uh, go beyond the traditional dimensional analysis and really get into the details of uh, their manufacturing processes to address questions from their customers and uh, deal with very, very high resolution of understanding of the quality processes. So we work with them to help assess their, their products and their processes. Uh, and as a result, mm -hmm. they enhance the customer relationships by demonstrating attention to advanced product and process controls. And they did so very economically because by working with our labs, they avoided major capital investments and they worked with really world-class experts to run the analyses while their in-house teams put the focus on the customer, satisfying the customer. So it's an example of the kind of partnership that we're able to bring to manufacturers where uh, we provide in-depth analytical capabilities and the, the company focuses on uh, the, their own customer advice, making sure the customer is happy. Next slide, please. Future Facilities is an example of a small to medium-sized company. This is actually a global co company. Uh, based out of London, uh, England. They have a New York City office, which uh, came about uh, through the assistance, uh, assistance of a little strong participation of uh, one of our research centers, the Energy Smart uh, uh, Electronic System Center. Uh, we focus on energy efficiency in the center uh, for, for data centers. Um, as uh, an approximation, of all the energy uh, used in the United States, about 3% is going into the data centers uh, that power the internet. About half of that energy is used to power the servers. The other half of the energy is used to cool things down. So data center operators are keenly interested in reducing the costs of, of cooling. Future facilities uh, makes simulation software used for anal analyzing uh, data center operations. In particular, we work with them on improving their uh, CFD-based modeling software. Uh, they're taking it out of the realm of a static analysis tool into a more dynamic operational planning tool that looks uh, through the entire life cycle of the data center. As a result, they upgraded their software offering in the marketplace, uh, not just in New York, but it affects them uh, across the world. Plus, uh, they hired one of our recent PhD graduates who worked with them on this uh, to work in their New York City office. And this is a very consistent story that we find with our industrial partners. Uh, we have faculty and graduate students working on the projects. So the students become acclimated to the company, attuned to the needs of industry, and many of them go on to work uh, for the company which sponsors the research or a, a similar kind of company. So it's a great access point to students who have already 
gained experience working with industry solving uh, uh, industrial problems, but doing so at the uh, advanced level of understanding that comes from master's and, and PhD program experience. Next slide, please. Our last example is a small startup company. Uh, they were working on sensors for detecting contaminants in continuous flow water supplies. Uh, they had an approach based on a quartz crystal microbalance that was very sensitive to temperature. We worked with them to design a dual uh, quartz crystal microbalance approach that was not sensitive to ambient temperatures and uh, we developed some prototypes for them, which they are now able to work on commercializing and take the market with a uh, really a novel technology for continuous monitoring of, of water system contaminants. So uh, last slide, please. So whether you're a large company or a small company, uh, we have ways that uh, we can help you. Uh, the support that we offer ranges from a phone call that might last minutes. Uh, we talk about your problem, a little advice, and problem solved. Through working with our, uh, our labs for, for specific services, uh, engaging in problem solving projects, uh, longer term working on research projects that might last a year, or becoming a member of our research centers and engaging in industry sponsored research over the course of several years. Uh, we fit our approach to meet your needs, so it all starts with a phone call. So if you're curious, if any of this strikes a chord, please give us a call, and uh, we'll do our best to figure out how to serve you. Uh, with that, thank you, and I turn it back over to Allison. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you joining us all the way from San Jose. and. Um, we're not jealous at all, and we're also not jealous about the snow you're gonna shovel off of your car when you get back to the airport at Binghamton. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> okay, we have one uh, presenter left, and again, just a quick reminder, you can submit questions through your GoToWebinar control panel. We're collecting those now. And I'll turn it over now to Mike Thurston from the Center of Excellence in Advanced and Sustainable Manufacturing at Rochester Institute of Technology. Thank you, Allison. Uh, you can go right to the next slide. Uh, so our center is uh, located at RIT at the Galisano Institute for Sustainability. Uh, this uh, institute has a couple of academic programs, uh, including a unique uh, program and a grad program in sustainable manufacturing. And uh, we have a variety of um, research uh, programs within our institute in energy and mobility. Um, uh, one of those uh, programs, the Pollution Prevention Institute, is also supported by New York State and uh, does work in uh, uh, reducing waste and emissions uh, with uh, companies across the state. So um, we can connect you to the P2I if, if you have an interest in that area. Um, in, in our center, uh, our staff are all uh, full-time staff, uh, most of which come from industry and, and understand uh, you know, uh, kind of the needs of business. Um, uh, like some of the other presenters said, uh, we work with, um, you know, on, on collaborative projects with companies from startup to many small and medium companies and also um, Fortune 500 companies, uh, all the way from uh, early product and process technology development to uh, improvement of existing uh, products and processes. Uh, we also uh, collaborate with companies on uh, uh, funding proposals through uh, NYSERDA, SBIR, or FuseHub, for example. Next slide, please. So uh, we have a variety of uh, uh, test beds within our organization, and then we have also have access to other facilities on campus. A couple of our capabilities include uh, uh, fuel cell development and testing, uh, vehicle systems, uh, we have a couple of labs that support 3D printing, in, including additive repair technologies and, and some of the other capabilities listed there. Um, so our, our work uh, focuses kind of around uh, two main areas, improving uh, products um, and, and focus on product design and then improving, improving manufacturing processes. 
Uh, there, there obviously is an environmental and energy component to the work, but uh, we're not limited to projects that have um, that that focus on those kinds of issues. Uh, we really uh, work with partner companies to uh, across the range of different um, goals to improve product and in, in process um, um, performance. Uh, so, so those are listed there um, on the on the energy side. Um, on the manufacturing process side, we, we work on both operational and energy efficiency. We do a lot of work in um, uh, data analysis and uh, um, uh, big data, uh, internet of things, that, that area and in, in employing data within your manufacturing operation to uh, in, improve your overall performance. Um, one of the other things that our center is very engaged within the uh, National Manufacturing USA Network uh, there's currently, uh, I think, 14 different uh, institutes, and uh, we're uh, very involved in, in four of those, the Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institute, which really looks at the nexus of design and manufacturing data and how to use that information better. Uh, the Remade Institute focuses on uh, more of the product lifecycle, recycling, repair, reuse, and remanufacturing. That's a new institute located in Rochester. And then uh, two of the other new institutes, um, uh, the Advanced Robotics Institute and also Smart Manufacturing, uh, which the Smart Manufacturing Institute focuses more on uh, sensors and data for improved manufacturing and control. So a little bit of overlap there between digital and, and smart. Um, in, in, it sounds like there's overlap, but really they focus on slightly different um, technology areas. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, so just to kind of go through a, a couple of uh, types of projects that, that we've done. Um, uh, the first one, Acro Industries, a manufacturer in the Rochester area. Uh, we did a plant-wide energy monitoring and analysis for them and uh, identified op opportunities for to, to have them change their operational procedures uh, that led to um, uh, reduction in energy consumption and uh, peak power on the order of 6% uh, reduction in energy use and 11% reduction in peak power, mainly through uh, changing a little bit how they do business, but uh, not without spending a lot of um, investment in, in dollars. Um, Council Rock is a, uh, the next two companies are in our clean energy incubator here at RIT Startups. Uh, Council Rock is developing a product uh, to support uh, smart grid communications. And they needed help initially with um, design and, and analysis of uh, the packaging for their electronics. So um, uh, we, we modeled that from both a structural and a thermal standpoint to uh, make sure that their product met the, the very high and very low temperature requirements. Um, very often when we work with companies, we, we work with them you know, over a number of years, particularly startups as they go from kind of the early stage through getting ready for production. Um, another project we did with Council Rock was um, to uh, help them develop the technology roadmap for their communications technology, both the software and, and hardware uh, for their uh, next generation product, which is uh, hopefully getting ready to launch here very quickly. They have a, a current um, uh, proposal out to a large utility in California that uh, that we're hoping they win to provide that technology. Uh, Till Solar is another startup developing a uh, PV system uh, with uh, um, combined heat and power. So they have a water-cooled PV and then you use the thermal energy from the water. Um, they were they needed help in kind of overall optimizing their product from a fluid, thermal, and structural performance. So um, we've been uh, working with them on that using uh, computer engineering tools to um, help them improve their product and also uh, get it ready for manufacturing. Uh, the last example uh, is a collaboration with three companies in the Rochester area. Uh, two in the optics industry and one in, in injection molding. Um, and we brought them together uh, as, as a team to develop a new system for electronic work instructions with augmented reality 
and uh, that project was funded by the Digital Manufacturing Institute. So an example of where we put together a project to bring in additional research funding for, um, for technology that they were interested in. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, we have a website, the link is listed there. Uh, if you'd like to, if you have a, a project you'd like to um, talk to us about, you can contact us through the website or uh, register for our newsletter uh, through that link. Um, and uh, we, we send a newsletter almost monthly that includes uh, techn technology articles in the, in the advanced manufacturing space and then uh, other information about news and upcoming regional events and also funding opportunities uh, that, that we think uh, could be uh, applicable to New York State manufacturers and um, uh, that we're interested in collaborating on. Uh, so you can contact us through the website or you can call um, myself or my business manager, uh, Dr. Mark Kristofik. And as uh, Steve said, uh, many times uh, companies have a question and, you know, we can connect you to a resource that can help um, help you uh, without actually moving to a project stage, just provide some uh, quick advice and consulting. In other cases, uh, we'll, we'll assign a project manager and they'll work with you to uh, scope a project in, in a project budget and timeline uh, according to the, the work that you need done. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, listening to these presentations. Um, we've collected a few questions, and uh, you can still submit through that um, through your control panel. Um, we had a question from somebody who heard, um, I think it was Steve's uh, workforce development success story, and looking to understand, I, and I, I would add to that, I, I saw that you know Ed's the Center of Excellence for Environmental and Energy Systems at Syracuse um, has an internship program. Um, looking for some more information on how your centers have uh, worked with companies on their workforce development and training. Uh, issues, um, which I, I guess, as we know, across manufacturing, uh, the issue of uh, finding qualified workers is a significant one. So I, I think I'd summarize the question as how can partnerships with centers of excellence help address some of those needs? Well, uh, there, there's multiple ways that we've engaged with companies. First of all, we work very closely in partnership with the uh, Watson School of Engineering and the uh, uh, departments of physics and chemistry. So those are uh, great pipelines for students uh, graduating at the bachelor's level as well as uh, the master's and PhD level. And they all have offices of uh, uh, engagement with industry to help them get the, their, their graduates connected to industry. Relative to a little bit more focused work, uh, we have put on uh, seminars, uh, we, in the past, we've done things like uh, hold electronics packaging certificate courses, uh, which are aimed at the uh, practicing professional to uh, enhance their skills. Uh, the School of Engineering puts on similar kinds of continuing ed courses. Uh, and then even more focused than that, uh, we will work with companies who are interested in uh, internship programs uh, where their intern uh, might be working on a master's or a PhD and they split the time between the university and the company location and they're working on a research project uh, that is sponsored in part by the company so it's focused on on company needs uh, so there's as I trying to indicate there's multiple paths and we're uh, always happy to tailor something specific to a company's needs uh, Allison? Uh, Thanks, about also Thanks, uh, Mike Thurston. I was just going to add there, if you're looking for worker level training, uh, there are a lot of programs at the community colleges, and we do uh, collaborate with those programs in, in, in developing, you know, programs for new needs, um, in particularly in, in our area with MCC, and uh, we've done some programs in, in food, food industry manufacturing uh, where 
a, a cluster of companies identified a need and, and we went out and got federal funding to basically develop a program to support that. So there's a lot of opportunity there. And, and I think uh, also Allison may want to comment, they, they probably have a facilitating uh, mechanism through Fuse Hub as well. So this is uh, Ed, Ed Bogish. So I'll just add, add to what Steve and Mike have said. Um, just as a rough rule of thumb, I'm going to say if you've got about a dozen workers that need to be trained either at a single company or if you can imagine there's a group of companies that have a similar need, I think any, any of our centers could uh, could find a way to address address that need. It's it's a little bit tougher when it's a you know two two or three, um, and 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 I think it ultimately our universities kind of the be best way we can do workforce development is to have you hire our graduates, and uh, and that that we prepare them for success when they're when when you hire them. Um, and then the other thing in in the Syracuse area, we partner with our. Um, every, every region has a local economic development group in the Syracuse area. It's called Center State Corporation for Economic Opportunity, Center State CEO. We're working with them right now on a talent task force that is men, meant to identify the workforce development needs of, uh, of companies in the five counties of central New York. And if any, any of the listeners are in that area and you want to participate in the talent task force, you can comment. You can contact Tammy Rosanio, and we'll, we'll be happy to get you involved in, a, in an assessment of your needs so that we could, again, look for opportunities to aggregate the needs of, of, of multiple companies and develop programs that, that can address, address things at a regional level. Thanks, everyone. This is Allison. Um, and thanks, Mike. As far as FUSUB's concerned, you know, we, um, right on our website, www.fusehub.com, we have a simple form. People can fill out companies when they have, manufacturers, when they have any need um, of any kind, can approach us and we will field that um, in cases when uh, the question has something concerning workforce development. Um, in some cases, we can direct companies to resources for uh, supporting things like on-the-job training, um, especially if there's some kind of technological innovation or capital investment being made. So certainly worth reaching out to us. And um, again, just being part of these uh, local ecosystems with the Centers of Excellence and their economic development partners, um, I think positions companies well to find ways to address their workforce development needs. Um, we have a question uh, as to who in these private sector firms are you, the centers of excellence, interacting with? What level? Is it the CEO, engineer, um, et cetera? What does the process look like when a company shows up at your door to get assistance? And how does that engagement proceed? We received that question before Mike Thurston kind of illustrated uh, a bit of that, but I'd open the floor to others who can help answer it. I'll just say quickly, this is Ed, Ed Bogish from Syracuse. Uh, well, it's all of the above. <laughs> Again, back to what Steve Zarnicki said about, uh, you know, the interactions can be like a phone call to, you know, long-term engagements. Um, long-term engagements typically involve folks who can commit resources. And in particular, it's the time of personnel on the company side to in interact with, with folks on, on the university side. Um, so again, it can be a short interaction with a specific individual who has a pre pressing need who can get a get an answer on a phone call, or you know, if it's a longer term engagement that involves a commitment of resources, you have to get to the level in the organization where the person has the authority to make those commitments. Yeah, this is Steve. I think Ed nailed it. <laughs> Excuse me. The thing I would add is. Um, on having worked in the industry for 30 years, I can say that you know, to industry, universities are often mysterious places. Uh, not sure what goes on there, not sure who to call. What I would encourage is uh, the centers of excellence are a great starting place in terms of who to call, as is Fuse Hub as a place to, here's somebody who can call. Uh, one of the things that, that all of us in the centers of excellence are expert at 
is making connections. You know, we'll figure out if we can't answer the question, who in the university can, and we'll work to make that connection happen. Thanks. Um, we'll close with one more question. Um, this uh, question appears to be from a startup company that uh, has been self-funded to date. Uh, and this questioner is curious. Um, I'm going to reword this a little bit. Do COEs, do centers of excellence um, provide a platform or environment for uh, startups like this one um, to engage with or find out about companies that are out there, established companies seeking products and technologies that are not on the market yet? Um, I guess the question is, does that happen organically in your business? Um, or deliberately in some cases, uh, I'll turn it over to any panelist who has a response to that. Uh, hey, this is Colby. Um, it, it happens both organically and deliberately for us um, if it's in our domain. So in weather in any of the verticals that, the industry verticals that, mm. weather, that weather effects were pretty well connected um, so if, if we can help connect to potential customers in those verticals, that, that's something that, that we do. This is Ed from Syracuse. Um, so the short answer is we, we work with lots of startups and we help them with customer discovery. So we can open a door to establish you know, potential customers so that the startups can have those interactions to understand what what the needs are, and, and we facilitate those connections to identify which, which prospective um, customers would be most promising for the specific startup. And and similarly here at Binghamton, uh, we it happens organically because uh, of our industrial memberships. There's a lot of cross fertilization across our companies, but we also uh, are a, work to support the Startup New York program, uh, providing capabilities and, and uh, spaces for new startup companies. And we're affiliated with the Binghamton uh, High Tech Incubator as just as I think the other centers of, centers of excellence tend to be affiliated with incubators where there are programs specifically to help companies with market discovery and customer development uh, mentored typically by an experienced entre entrepreneur. Yeah, Thank you I would all. echo what you said. Um, connecting with the incubator is is a, a very good idea, and we tend to provide technical assistance in in collaboration with incubators across the state. Thanks. Um, okay, so if you've heard things today that make you think your company can benefit from engaging with the Center of Excellence, um, these panelists stand ready to assist you in getting engaged. It's just a matter of shooting them an email. Um, if you didn't get your question answered today, I, I apologize. Um, it's just a, a matter of timing, and in some cases, we have some really just direct connections to make after the webinar um, based on your outreach. Um, Again, the centers of excellence that you heard from today are part of a larger network of 11 centers of excellence. Um, they're listed here at the left. The ones that are on the right are the ones that just presented. Um, they are all supported by Empire State Development, so there's a full list of them available at the link um, right here. And again, you'll have access to these slides. Um, and if, if, if you're still not sure where to start or you want to learn more about centers that weren't represented here today, um, you can contact FuseHub directly. We are here to do exactly that, to route companies like yours to the right expertise wherever it might be in the state. We make it our business to know what expertise and capabilities lie where. Um, and we're a nonprofit organization designed to do just that. Um, and I, I wanted to highlight, like, that my major takeaway from today is, is noting that um, while these centers uh, engage in specific projects and transactions with companies, um, really some of the most fruitful um, engagements are longstanding partnerships where companies are, um, are, are true partners of the center so that they can stay abreast, not just of a problem that they're facing at that moment, but of their next opportunity. 
So uh, thank you so much to everyone who presented today and for those who spent an hour uh, with us listening and submitting questions. Um, please check back to the site. Uh, in a little while, we'll be able to post the slides and uh, feel free to engage with any of us that you've heard from today. Have a great afternoon.